Let's uh, put our focus now on the banking space and uh, jump into Tanzania. Now, recently we reported of a Dar es Salaam bank that acquired Oriental Bank in Kenya. Today we want to put a spotlight on the Tanzanian banking sector. And joining me from the Johannesburg studio is RMB's Mkhululi Nkube. Uh, Mkhululi, how are you doing this afternoon? Hello, Bonnie. How are you? Great. Let's start with the performance of the currencies because we've just been talking about the poor performance of the local unit. Uh, Tanzanian shilling is not spared either, losing just about, what, 25%? It's not spared, Bonnie. And uh, one of the key reasons is that the uh, US dollar has been strengthening against a number of emerging markets. Uh, Tanzanian shilling not spared. Uh, also, Bonnie, what we have seen is that the uh, aid inflows into Tanzania have reduced to an extent. So those two factors combined have uh, sort of, uh, you know, exacerbated the situation. So what we have seen from a central bank perspective is that the central bank has introduced a number of regulations. Last week, uh, the central bank introduced uh, an, an increase in the cash reserve uh, ratio for the banks by 200 basis points. So effectively what that means is that the banks would have to hold uh, additional funds with the central bank for the level of deposits they get. So we are seeing a number of changes from a regulatory perspective, Bonnie. So that's one of the uh, you know, aspects that we have seen. Also, Bonnie, uh, we have realized that the central bank has uh, decreased the level of uh, uh, NOP, that's the net open FX position for the banks. So it was reduced from 7.5% to 5.5%. So what that means is that the central bank is trying to curtail the level of volatility in the FX market. That's uh, the second regulatory perspective that we've seen. Also, Bonnie, the capital adequacy levels by the central bank was uh, increased. Uh, last year it was 10% and it was increased to 12% uh, beginning of the year and uh, now it's at 14%. From, from, from a regulatory perspective, Bonnie, those are the changes that we have seen. Yeah, the central bank is trying to curtail the volatility in the market. Mukululi, obviously, um, this situation might be, and we're hoping that it's short-lived, but some of these uh, interventions have far-reaching consequences. Going forward, um, what will be the impact and the consequences of some of these adjustments that the regulator is making? In fact, it's true. They do have some consequences. When you look at the cash reserve ratio, from a broader economic front, they do have positive uh, you know, influence in the sense that they can tell the depreciation of the uh, local unit, but also they uh, reduce the inflationary pressures. But from a banking front, wh what it does is that uh, a number of banks, we have seen that banks have been growing annually 20%, uh, you know, their balance sheet. But going forward, we might see some slight subside, subsiding in terms of uh, balance sheet growth. So that's one of the implications that we're, we might likely to see. And wh when you look at the increase in the capital adequacy levels, uh, we're talking here from 10% to current levels of 14%. So it's good in the sense that it strengthens the banking system as a whole. Uh, the loan loss uh, absorption capacity will be very much enhanced. But for those banks that do not meet the uh, capital requirements, what it means is that they would have to go to the uh, bond markets, raise tier two uh, Basel compliant uh, bonds, or alternatively have the investors inject additional capital. I was in Tanzania, Bonnie, uh, last week, and uh, we spoke to a number of banks, and uh, yes, a number of banks do meet the minimum capital requirements, but for, for some of the banks that do not meet the requirements, they, they would have to pull up their socks and inject additional capital. Mukululi, we've been talking about a lot of cross-border movements and Equity Bank moved into the DRC. Last week we had an announcement of Bank M from Tanzania, Dar es Salaam buying Oriental Bank. And there's a lot of this integration that is happening. What is the regulative position of all this? It's true. There's been some talk on integration for some time, but from a timing perspective, we haven't seen much traction. In fact, uh, the regulation it was on the front of uh, banking integration, particularly from a supervisory point of view. So, so, so that would be key in the sense that it would enhance uh, you know, compliance to regulatory standards, but also it will create some uniformity, particularly from a, a regulatory point of view. But we haven't seen much from that perspective. So what, what we've seen is that uh, the you know, entire system, we've seen a number of Kenyan banks, for example, venturing into uh, the entire region. 
uh, it, it's quite positive. But from an integration point of view, the practicality of that is yet to be ascertained. That, that's aspect number one, Bonnie, from that front. But also, when you look at the outlook for uh, the entire banking system, in, uh, looking at Tanzania in particular, you realize that uh, it's still under Basel I. And look at Kenya, for example, it has moved to Basel II. And also, you look at Kenya, they do have the deposit insurance scheme. So going forward, we are likely to see a scenario where the Tanzanian uh, Central Bank introduces uh, Basel II and to an extent some aspects of uh, Basel III. And what are the implications for that? So we would likely to see a situation where the banks have to prudently manage their funding and their liquidity management. So those are some of the things that we uh, can be, you know, can look forward to going forward, Bonnie. Mukuloli, in East Africa, mobile banking is a big thing. Um, in Tanzania, what do you see as a game-changing trend going forward in the banking sector? So it's true, Bonnie. The, the, there is, you see, looking at the uh, possibilities, the opportunities for the banks, there are massive opportunities for the banks to, uh, you know, cooperate, to, you know, come to some consensus of some sort with, uh, with, the, with mobile technology companies. So wh what is happening is that through mobile technology, a number of banks are actually garnering a number of deposits. But the lending that happens from that space, uh, Bonnie, it's not something significant. The type of loans that happen, yes, we note that it's actually picking up, but it's actually small micro loans that are happening. But uh, from a funding perspective, we realize that uh, it's going to be strong, particularly from a deposit garnering uh, perspective. Well, that's a very good place to leave it. Many thanks. Mukululin Kube is a financial institutions analyst with the RMB 